Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna answer all of your questions about putting Vaseline on your face as a moisturizer. I think in a lot of online blogs and different skincare forums, this is referred to as the slug method. But I get a ton of questions from you guys about, hey, how do I know if putting Vaseline on my face is gonna be a good choice? Will it break me out? So in today's video, I'm gonna answer those types of questions. Vaseline, what is it? It's petroleum jelly or petrolatum. I use petroleum jelly and petrolatum interchangeably, but they mean the same thing. And Vaseline is just the brand name. So if you go into the store, like the drugstore, you can find petroleum jelly generic and it's the same thing. So you don't necessarily need to be brand loyal. And in fact, petroleum jelly is often less expensive than brand name Vaseline. Anyways, there's a lot of enthusiasm around putting it on the face. As a dermatologist, I'm enthusiastic about putting it on the face as well. It's one of the skincare products I f most frequently recommend to people, especially people with eczema. The reason petroleum jelly or petrolatum is so fantastic as a skincare product for the skin and for dry skin conditions is that no other skincare product compares to petrolatum in terms of its ability to reduce what's called transepidermal water loss, meaning water that evaporates out of your skin and leads to dryness. Who can benefit from such an inclusive ointment in their moisturizing routine? Really many people and in different situations. It's inevitable that at some point in everyone's life, they're going to have an issue with their skin barrier. Things like topical medications for acne, salicylic acid, prescription retinoids, cleansing, washing the skin, even sweating can impair our skin barrier. If you have a medical condition that affects your skin like atopic dermatitis, otherwise known as eczema, or acne, or rosacea, part of those conditions, those diseases, involves an inherent skin barrier defect that drives the disease and also makes you more likely to have dry skin. So using something very occlusive that helps to seal in transepidermal water loss can help in protecting your skin and reinforcing your skin barrier. Also, when uh, the weather changes in the winter time, the ambient humidity in our environment drops, the air becomes very dry, and as a result, water evaporates out of our skin. We lose water a lot more easily. If you are somebody who commutes by foot outdoors in the winter time, cold wind can chap the skin, lead to what's called a wind burn, and that essentially leads to a lot of dryness and irritation through impairment of the skin barrier. Using something as occlusive as petroleum jelly, aka petrolatum or Vaseline, is great. Why else do we love petrolatum so, so much? Well, it's been a part of the US pharmacopoeia since the 1880s. It has such a long-standing history of use and safety in dermatology. And there's a lot of fear mongering amongst the clean beauty uh, marketing against petrolatum that is not substantiated whatsoever, you guys. I, I am here to reassure you that petrolatum, whether it be Vaseline or any other generic brand, is so, so safe. As a matter of fact, it's one of the safest things you can put on your skin. And here's why. It doesn't get absorbed into the body whatsoever. And also, it's what is referred to as non-sensitizing. It does, unlike the majority of skincare product ingredients, petroleum jelly or petrolatum does not bind to any proteins in your skin. And that's really good because when ingredients bind to proteins in your skin, then your immune system comes in and says, hey, what the heck is this? Changing things up, I don't like it. And it mounts what's called an immune response and you develop an allergy. This can lead to irritation as well. That is something that does not happen with Vaseline or petroleum jelly petrolatum because it does not bind to proteins. In other words, it is inert. It's also non-irritating, which is great. It's so non-irritating and so non-problematic that we use it as a negative control in what's called patch testing. Patch testing is a type of test that we do in the dermatology clinic to determine what ingredients are coming in contact with your skin that might be causing different types of rashes for a patient. And as part of that test, we include one um, condition or well that is just plain petrolatum as a negative control. So we can compare all the other wells to that and say, this is what normal unaffected skin looks like because all we put on here was plain petrolatum. 
so it serves as a negative control. It's also used a ton, not only in dermatology, but in other specialties of medicine for treating uh, sites that uh, have had local surgeries, excisions. Um, it's great for wound healing. It provides a nice clean uh, seal for healing wounds to uh, prevent bacteria and things from getting into the wound and allow the wound to stay hydrated and heal optimally. So it's, it's great. I can't tell you guys enough good things about it. There, additionally, there's more fear mongering around petrolatum in that, uh, you know, there are claims that it's comedogenic, but I'm here again to reassure you that petrolatum is actually not comedogenic, meaning it does not clog pores. That has been determined, established a long time ago. I think a lot of this misinformation stems from the fact that people are confused between they're getting petrol they're getting cosmetic petrolatum petroleum jelly confused with crude petroleum in like the oil refining industry petrolatum that you buy in the store is what is called cosmetic grade petrolatum it is a byproduct of dewaxing mineral oil and is very safe now if you were to go out to an oil refinery and put pet petroleum on your skin that definitely will cause, will cause an acne, pro, acne rash because petroleum is contaminated with tar derivatives and tar on the skin is a known um, cause of, of acne. Therefore, you know, that's where I think a lot of this confusion and misinformation stems from. But cosmetic grade um, petrolatum that you, that, that you would buy in the store, anything that you would buy in the store basically, especially sold to you for putting on the skin is not going to is not going to be pore clogging all right who benefits from using petrolatum on their face as a moisturizer um, this can really help if you are coping with dry dry skin in the winter time chapped skin or if you're somebody who has been using too many skincare products, you're experiencing a lot of dryness, irritation, and peeling, using petrolatum as your nighttime moisturizer can help and really strengthen your skin barrier and allowing your skin to heal more expeditiously. If you've just undergone a cosmetic procedure like a uh, resurfacing laser treatment or a peel, using petrolatum is also a good idea at that point because your skin barrier is impaired, you've got a lot of dryness, redness, peeling, and that can help in, in getting you back to, to, to normal more quickly. Obviously, if you have a history of eczema and you're experiencing a flare of eczema on your face, petrolatum is a great go-to. People with eczema are at greater risk for developing allergies to things they put on their skin, particularly when their eczema is flaring. So using petrolatum is probably your best bet to reduce risk uh, of problems occurring and get your, skin, get your skin back to where it needs to be. Now, I think the group of people who have the greatest uh, resistance and fear around using uh, Vaseline on their face are people with acne or oily skin. I will reiterate though, Vaseline does not clog pores. However, heavy occlusive moisturizers on the face of acne prone individuals can trigger a flare of acne. It's not because they're comedogenic, it just has to do with the nature of acne and for whatever reason, in some people, not everybody with acne, but some people with acne, when they use really heavy occlusive uh, moisturizers, it can trigger what's called closed comedones. A lot of people misconstrue closed comedones for milia, and I'll hear that from time to time. Does this moisturizer cause milia? Uh, or I used this moisturizer and I got a ton of milia and I stopped and they went away. That is not likely milia. Milia are much different from closed comedones. They kind of look similar, but milia are actually true cysts. Using moisturizers doesn't trigger milia per se, and they certainly don't go away like as soon as you stop using a particular moisturizer. They are, they are something that often requires a procedure to get rid of or a prescription cream. So most cases, it's not likely milia that people are reporting. It's more likely closed comedones, which brings me back to the fact that for whatever reason, using heavy moisturizers um, on the skin of some people can trigger closed comedones to form. And if you have acne, that's part of acne, closed comedones. Um, so, you know, if you're acne prone, completely reasonable to avoid, to, to consider not doing the Vaseline thing. 
Unless the situation where I encourage using Vaseline, at least in the in a short term period, is if you are A, on prescription Accutane, you can be, you're obviously going to go through a lot of dryness and peeling because, <clears throat> and as a result, your skin becomes red and inflamed. Using a heavy occlusive ointment at that time is really helpful in reducing that burden of dryness, at least while you are on the Accutane. And then another situation with acne where it can be helpful at least for a limited time to use Vaseline on the skin is if you are using a topical medication that's very drying and peeling and you're having a lot of redness and irritation. A classic example of this is going to be Retin-A. I have videos on Retin-A but you'll recall from those videos that in the beginning of using when you first start using Retin-A the skin goes through a process called retinization. There's a lot of dryness, peeling, and redness. And for the most part, that does not last, that's certainly not indefinite, and it typically resolves after anywhere from six weeks to three months of consistent use, although everyone's a little different. Um, and so using an occlusive ointment at that time can help, it, it basically protects the skin and reinforces the skin and helps it heal and recover more quickly. Now a caveat to Vaseline on the face in people with acne who are using different acne medications topically or really any medication that you're using on the skin topically that's been prescribed to you. You don't want to put Vaseline on and then try and put your medication on. Because Vaseline is so occlusive, it will prevent those active ingredients from getting into your skin and they won't work. So you don't want to do that. Therefore, I end up telling people uh, with acne who are on a prescription retinoid to consider using Vaseline uh, in the beginning every other night on their off night. So I often tell people in the beginning with a topical retinoid to use it every other night while the skin starts getting used to it. And on those off nights, using, using Vaseline can definitely help when the skin is really red and peeling. I think a lot of people have the compulsion when the skin is red and peeling and peeling to pick at the peeling and to try and chemically or mechanically exfoliate that peeling. But you guys, that peeling is exfoliation. And attempting to exfoliate, exfoliation gets you nowhere. And that's what that's what makes the dryness and peeling of the retinization process even longer and even more arduous. So um, that is a that is a time period where coming in with something intensive like Vaseline can definitely help get through that process. How do you use Vaseline on the face? The best way to use it is uh, after you have cleansed your skin and the skin is still damp, uh, then you wanna put the Vaseline on immediately. And I say damp, but not soaking wet. Uh, not, it doesn't need to be soaking wet, just slightly damp. The reason for this is that there's nothing in Vaseline that's going to deliver hydration to the skin or hold on to existing hydration. So putting it on immediately after you cleanse while there's still a little bit of dampness on the surface of the skin really helps lock that in and seal it into, into the, the top layer of the skin. You also can layer Vaseline over a hyaluronic acid serum. That way the hyaluronic acid can bind onto that water that's still on your face after cleansing, hold it on, and then the Vaseline seals in the water and prevents transepidermal water loss. So you really get an amp up of hydration and and seal in that, that water nicely. So, you know, that's one way to combine things, but be careful with combining a ton of stuff and layering a ton of stuff. An issue that you might run into is that if you're using products that are particularly irritating, a different cosmeceuticals, and you're layering a bunch of stuff and then sealing it in with Vaseline, if that stuff is irritating, you're gonna increase the irritation even more by sealing it in with Vaseline, because you're effectively like, putting it on, on, under occlusion and that, that really just drives the penetration in further and can definitely increase irritation a lot. So that's a situation where people get into a lot of, run into a lot of problems. They may attribute it just to the Vaseline. In reality it's that you've, you've been using, you're using too many products underneath the Vaseline. And along that vein, it is very important that the skin is clean before you put the Vaseline on top because if you still have makeup on the surface of your skin or dirt you're basically gonna trap that onto the skin and drive it in, and that really can cause irritation and drive acne. In fact, I'm always suspicious that when people use something heavy duty like Vaseline, 
and they get a breakout of acne. I'm always suspicious that it's just that maybe they didn't get their makeup off fully before they put the Vaseline on, especially if you wear long wear foundations that definitely can happen. So it's really important to clean the skin thoroughly. Don't just rely on a makeup wipe that does not adequately remove the cosmetics. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys in terms of talking about Vaseline. Yes, it can be associated with exacerbations of acne. I personally am suspicious that it may be due to an inadequate pre-cleanse, but uh, you know, for whatever reason, some people's acne will flare with Vaseline, but it is not comedogenic. Also, Vaseline is not dangerous. It's actually one of the safest things you could put on your skin. I repeat, it's one of the safest things you can put on your skin. Please just ignore the clean beauty fear mongering around Vaseline. Clean beauty fear mongering around Vaseline has been replaced with a lot of plant oils that are far more allergenic and far more likely to be associated with exacerbations of acne than good old plain petrolatum. Guys, been using it since the 1880s. Long standing history of safety and efficacy. So don't fall, don't fall for marketing hype against good old inexpensive and effective petrolatum, AKA Vaseline. Now, you may be wondering what about Aquaphor? All the what abouts. What about Aquaphor? What about CeraVe healing ointment? What about insert your favorite ointment? Those are all great to try on your face. The nice thing though about Vaseline is that it's safer because there's nothing in it that your skin immune system could possibly be annoyed with. Uh, nothing. In the case of Aquaphor, for example, Aquaphor has lanolin in it and many people develop an allergy to lanolin. In the case of CeraVe healing ointment, there's nothing in particular that's common as an allergen or irritant, but everyone is different and something in that might irritate you or cause sensitivity. So plain Vaseline is actually the safest bet, uh, the lowest risk, so long as you make sure to adequately cleanse the skin before applying it. It's probably the safest bet as far as an ointment. Vaseline brand name, or petroleum jelly or petrolatum, just plain petrolatum. But CeraVe healing ointment and Aquaphor, they're, they're based around petrolatum. That's the key ingredient. Petrolatum, no other ingredient compares to it in terms of its ability to prevent transepidermal water loss. It will reduce transepidermal water loss by 99%. No other ingredient competes with that. And so it's the best in terms of a skin protectant. Other ingredients that are skin protectants are things like dimethicone, which is a synthetic oil. It doesn't seal in transepidermal water loss as robustly as petrolatum, but it has a more lightweight feel to it. So people with oilier skin tend to get along better with dimethicone based products and moisturizers. That is what you will see in a lot of the oil free moisturizers, dimethicone, or some other, um, some other silicone like cyclomethicone. These are more comfortable to oily, acne-prone skin types, but it's not because petrolatum clogs pores. As confusing as that is, petrolatum does not clog pores. So I have a video talking about pore clogging ingredients and the limitations behind comedogenic ratings and why I say just ignore them and listen to what works for your skin type because what flares one person's acne will be no problem for many other people. Um, it's very individualized. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys in terms of chit-chatting about Vaseline. Uh, comment below on if you've heard of the slug method. I actually really just re recently ran across this terminology. I was like, what the heck is that? But um, I hope this answered your questions that you guys asked me about Vaseline. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.